welcome to all of you in the next class of this course. So, in the last lecture, we were trying to compute phi x using the following dilation equation or two scale relations and if phi x is known to us, we can also compute psi x using the wavelet equations okay, for k is equal to 0 to d minus 1 for k is equal to 0 to d minus 1. Of course, this time I am considering compactly supported wavelet that is why I am considering d here. Okay. So, in the last lecture we have seen uh, two three methods uh, cascade method, spectral method and then recursion method. If you recall the idea from the last lecture in recursion method basically we were computing phi x with the eigenvalue problem or basically you could say I was trying to compute this way. Okay. where phi 0 was the vector which contains uh, the value of phi at several integers. Okay. So, it is a uh, finding phi naught is a eigenvalue problem which is a problem of a linear algebra. So, you can look at how we have boiled down to the step of computing a eigen vector with this way. Okay. So, this is that was the idea behind recursion method. Now, as I was saying in the last lecture, there is also a inbuilt MATLAB function wave fun. Okay. There is a inbuilt MATLAB function wave fun. Okay. Wave fun. So, you can say the wave, wave, wave is coming from the wavelet and fun is stands for a function. So, what it does for us the syntax of a this wave fun function in the MATLAB is this ITR ok. So, d b m is the name of the wavelet ok, d b m is the name of the wavelet, d b stands for Dow Beaches and m is the vanishing moment of the Dow Beaches wavelet as I said in my previous lecture also. It gives you the value of phi which is a scaling function and value of psi which is a wavelet function at grid x i ok, at grid x i. So, what is grid x i? x i is basically this grid if you look at ok. Of course, phi and psi are compactly supported wavelet of order d. So, its support will be from 0 to d minus 1 that is why I am taking this and this iteration decides the resolution of the grid that is why the resolution is 0 then the next point will be 1 by 2 to the power i t r this is just a parameter. So, you could give this parameter value you could give 7, 8, 9 etcetera. So, if uh, m is 1 it will corresponds to Haar wavelet if m is 2 it will corresponds to Dow Beaches wavelet of order 4 Dow Beaches wavelet of order 4 or you could say if m is 2 Dow Beaches wavelet of order 2 or vanishing moment uh, sorry Dow Beaches wavelet of order 4 or vanishing moment 2 ok. So, now I can also show you how it looks uh, because you already know how it looks in case of a m is equal to 1 because m is equal to 1 corresponds to a first uh, member of a Dow Beaches family which is a Haar wavelet which we have already seen in our previous lectures. So, corresponds to m is equal to 2 how it looks let me show you in the figure yeah, so here we go. So, this is our phi x if you look at this is our phi x versus 
x ok and this is how the scaling function corresponds to uh, Darwich's wavelet of order 4 will look you can observe this is this cannot be expressed as an analytic function which we have seen in case of a Haar wavelet and this is a Darwich's wavelet this is phi this is psi. So, you could very well observe the basic property of the wavelet that integral of psi x dx should be 0. Of course, what uh, one more thing you could observe that this psi x is do you think it is symmetric? The answer of my question should be no, it is not a symmetric wavelet as well as it is not that is smooth also. In fact, in case of a Haar wavelet it is uh, uh, that psi x is a discontinuous function. In this case also, uh, it is non smooth, it might be continuous, but not uh, derivative may not be continuous. So, that one has to write a precise a statement for the regularity of phi and psi. That is anyway, that is the topic uh, uh, I will discuss next to it. But here you could observe how the phi and psi will look like in case of a Darby's wavelet of order. In case of a Darby's wavelet of order 2, we do not need to use this wave fun function because analytic expression is already there, but if you can you if you want to use you can use it that is not a problem. Now, I will also this is the first time I will also show you how the Fourier transform of this phi and psi will look like. So, you look you look at this is the magnitude of the Fourier transform versus omega. So, you can very well look at this is the how the magnitude of Fourier because this is a complex number that is why we are plotting with the magnitude how it should look like. This is phi hat and in next figure I am showing you this is psi hat. Okay. So, as I said uh, with the basic definition of the wavelet psi and psi hat both should be localized. So, of course, in this case psi is compactly supported. So, of course, it is a localized and psi hat is also you could see it is not a compactly support, it, but it is a localized function that you could observe from this figure. And integral of psi x dx is equal to 0 which anyway you have already observed when I was showing you the figure of psi. So, in this way at least you have seen some members of the Darby's family. Similarly, if you want to try this out later on you could uh, uh, change m to 4, 6, 8 onwards and you can keep playing with this how what is the effect of m on the uh, appearance of the wavelet. Now, as I said now I will be discussing more mathematical question behind any function which is what is the regularity. So, regularity of phi x and psi x. Of course, it is a very delicate uh, matter to discuss the regularity of phi and psi and in fact, whatever the regularity of phi the same regularity will be for psi because we are also writing psi in terms of MRA. Of course, whatever here I am saying here I am saying with respect to MRA wavelet the wavelet which are constructed using MRA because in some cases wavelets are not generated with MRA they are called non MRA wavelet. So, basically wave if you uh, want uh, classification of a wavelets in a broader sense MRA wavelets non MRA wavelets. So, in MRA case every time you can write down psi in terms of a phi. So, psi will contain the same regularity which phi will have. Okay. So, now I am writing a one statement that what is the regularity of this psi mu m where mu is this. Okay. So, this is the result given by Ingrid Daubici's okay, for a compactly supported wavelet regularity of phi and psi will satisfy 
this asymptotically. The main point to remember about this estimate is asymptotically. So, mean it, it is uh, true for large m otherwise it is almost true you could say. Okay. So, phi and psi belongs to this space everyone understand what is the meaning of this c this space means all the c. So, I can say, say what is the meaning of c 1 and c 2. C 1 means having continuous derivative function is continuous as well as its derivatives are also continuous having continuous derivative or in general this is derivative is can, uh, continuous as well as uh, all derivatives up to order 2 are continuous that you could that anyway this is a general spaces which uh, notations which uh, everyone should understand. So, m by I could either I am so with this vanishing moments I can use same kind of regularity m by 5. So, what I mean mean to say like uh, if I take uh, m is equal to 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay. So, phi and psi will belongs to c 1 and m is equal to 7 onwards phi and psi will belongs to c 2. So, if you look at this 3 and this 6 regularity of phi and psi same, but here we have wasted some of the vanishing moments, we have wasted some of the vanishing moments. Okay. So, of course, this is uh, not uh, exactly true because this result is true asymptotically for a large m, but it, this is close to that closely it follows for a smaller values of m also. So, that is that is what I wanted to say about the regularity of phi and psi. Now, what I am saying projection of f on the v j projection of function f x on v j space. Okay. So, this will be this where c k j r scaling function coefficient. This is called a scaling expansion and this is called scaling function coefficient. Okay. So, this is over r which is also equal to you could say i k j because the support of phi k j lies in i k j that we have already seen earlier. Okay. So, because of that reason instead of r I could write i k j. Now, if I wanted to observe this expansion at multiple levels, okay, which was the idea behind wavelet multi resolution analysis, I am decomposing my function at different levels. So, for that reason I have to use one of the axioms of MRA nestedness property and if you remember with that axioms of MRA we already saw what is the meaning of this
Okay. Clear? So, where J 0 is the coarsest level of approximation and cap, uh, this uh, J is the finest level of approximation. So, using this property of multi resolution approximation spaces V j, which we call it as a nestedness property also. I am writing whatever I am approximating function on V j space, I am rewriting this scaling expansion, because this was in V j, I will use now this right hand side. Okay. So, with that this will be c k j 0 phi k j 0 x plus j is j 0 j minus 1 and this will be on k d k j psi k j x. Okay. Of course, k you could say k varying from minus infinitive to infinitive here also k is varying from minus infinitive to infinitive. So, this c k j s are again called scaling function coefficient So, again you could with the same logic because support of phi k j 0 lies here instead of r I am writing this and d k j are called wavelet coefficient. Okay. And this is whole thing is called wavelet expansion. Wavelet expansion or you could call it as a wavelet series, because if you have to appreciate the beauty of wavelet series over Fourier series. So, with respect to that terminology better you call it as a wavelet series. Okay. So, now I am going to write the key estimate for wavelet series. With that estimate only you can appreciate that how wavelet series is doing better than Fourier series for some functions, for some specific class of a function. And that was the aim of my this part of the course that I should be able to tell you the advantage of wavelet series over Fourier series and advantage of wavelet transform over Fourier transform. So, then in that case you can uh, appreciate whatever application of Fourier transform, wavelet transform has also same set of applications and the same way you could say for a wavelet series with some additional advantages. Okay. So, what is that key estimate? That key estimate I am going to write in the form of a theorem. So, that I will write on the new page. What this theorem says? If m, this is the relation we always see m is the vanishing moment, d is the order of the wavelet. So, m is the vanishing moment of the wavelet psi k j and f belongs to C m r. I have already explained what is the meaning of this space. So, in that case, d k j will satisfy this estimate. Okay. Where C m is a constant independent of okay. 
okay, a, where cm is a constant independent of j, k and f. So, as I already uh, said that this is the key estimate of the wavelet. So, let me prove this how it is derived. So, for that reason I am considering a point x which belongs to this. Then I am writing a Taylor series of a function f around point x is equal to k by 2 j. Okay. Of course, because f belongs to C m r. So, for that reason I am writing a Taylor series m is equal to 0 to m minus 1 f m k by 2 j x minus k by 2 j to the power m by factorial m plus f m zeta x minus k by 2 j factorial m where zeta bel belongs to k by 2 j into x. This all of you know how to write down a Taylor series. This is a simple thing. Hmm. So, we are expanding function f. This is a remainder term of the Taylor series all of you know where zeta will belongs to this interval clear to everyone that here just uh, based on this assumptions I am expanding the function in the Taylor series form around the point k by 2 j. So, now I have to determine this estimate. So, for that reason I am writing what what is the formula of this wavelet coefficient d k j's are called wavelet coefficient c k j's are called scaling function coefficients that anyway we have seen already. So, and then so what is the formula of d k j f of x psi k j x d x. So, now in this formula I am inserting the expansion of f x which I have written just now m is equal to 0 to m minus 1 f m k by 2 j x minus k by 2 j by factorial m okay. and then psi k j x d x plus integral of f m psi k j x x minus k by 2 j to the power m by factorial m into d x. Okay. So, let me simplify this by considering this as a part 1 and this as a part 2. So, first let me take this part 1. Okay. So, how to take a part 1? So, I have to simplify this term. Okay. integral factorial m also I can take it out from the integral ok. So, this is part 1. So, if I now uh, again this I can take it common. 2 j x minus k m and if you look at what is the meaning of this symbol psi k j this is 2 to the power psi 2 j x minus k into d x. So, if now I use the change of variable 2 j x minus k is equal to y this will be y m psi y d y by 2 j. Of course, 
then this 2j by 2 will also and all have whatever coefficient value here it is coming I am denoting with this some c, this c uh, 2j can also be clubbed into this c. So, that is why I am doing that, but what is this and what is the value of m? m is from 0 to m minus 1. So, if you look at the vanishing moment property of the wavelet, this is basically 0, this is 0 with the vanishing moment property, this is 0. So, part 1 is 0. So, then I am left out with the term this okay. integral of f m x minus k by 2 j m psi k j x d x by factorial m. Okay, because part 1 is already 0. So, now if I am writing this way, then this will what this will become? Uh, right now, okay, in the next step I will do this inequality, but right now I can take it in equality itself 1 by factorial m f m xi by 2 in this will also be the mod integral of Okay. So, just I have taken the absolute value both the sides. Okay. Of course, uh, one and now I can use the inequality by saying 1 over factorial m and maximum of f m xi where because this thing I was taking from the integral. i k j if you look at that is what we have done here this was the part 2 I am going to simplify. Okay, so, f m xi zeta in fact, uh, if that is the case I could uh, I would have taken the inequality here itself. So, in zeta belongs to i k j and the left hand term will be y to the power m phi y d y what will um, what will be the coefficient 2 to the power j by 2 2 j and 2 j m. Okay. So, the support of y is from 0 to d minus 1 that is that is why that is the limit I am putting. So, this will become 2 to the power minus j m plus half okay, 1 over factorial m maximum of f m zeta, zeta belongs to i k j. In fact, you can overlook this step and you can start thinking from this step then it will make more sense. Okay. 0 to d minus 1 y m phi y d y clear. So, now this you can uh, now what if you were trying to prove if you look at this was the case. So, we got this term we got this term. So, now you could take it C m as a this constant, C m is basically this constant, which is independent of j, k and f, which is independent of j, k and f. So, now
if you look at, uh, the, the, so we have finished the proof of this key estimate. So, again I am writing this estimate in the next place to understand more clearly. Okay. So, now you have to observe this. First of all, do you think when you write a Fourier series, such kind of estimate available for a Fourier coefficients? The answer is no. Okay. We do not have such kind of estimates for the Fourier coefficients, but we have a this kind of a estimate for wavelet coefficient of a which is a part of the wavelet series that is okay, one thing that estimate is there, but what is the beauty of this estimate that is another thing. Okay, so, what is the beauty of this estimate? So, I can show you if function is a polynomial of degree let us say m minus 1, okay, then in that case this will become 0, because if you are taking a derivative of degree m mth derivative of a polynomial of a degree m minus 1, this term will be 0. So, it means wavelet coefficients are 0. So, if wavelet coefficients are 0, then you can expand the whole functions only with the fewer coefficients and that is the idea behind compression of the wavelet. That is why wavelets are used for compression whether it is a signal, it is a image or compressing the grid points on which we solve differential equations. And when we compress or we reduce the grid points on which we solve the differential equation, then it is called a we are solving a differential equations on the adaptive grid. So, that is the application of a wavelet in altogether different domain for solving a differential equations. But as far as engineering is concerned, wavelets are used for compressing the signals, image processing etcetera. But everywhere if you look at more mathematically the key thing, key estimate lies here. So, that wavelets are used for compressions. So, if you want to put this as a remark whatever I have said just now. So, let us put that in the form of remark. First thing that this wavelet coefficients tells you the local behavior of the function, local behavior of the function because you know in this domain. So, if function has some discontinuity in some of its derivative in some part of the domain. Okay. If function has some discontinuity or in some derivatives or you could say function is not smooth in some part of domain. It means you can say piece wise is smooth. So, if function is not smooth in some part of the domain, then wavelet coefficients will not decay very fast. Then dkj will not decay fast, but if function is smooth wavelet coefficients will decay very fast and if function is smooth in some part or rest part of the domain, then wavelet coefficients 
will decay very fast okay so for a smooth functions you don't need to uh, store that many wavelet coefficients because some of the wavelet coefficients will already be zero that's the idea behind compression and so wavelet coefficients most of the wavelet coefficient will be non zero in that part of the domain where function is showing some non smoothness nature so that's the idea and that's the beauty of this estimate and uh, this uh, kind of estimate is not available for uh, four year series that's why wavelet series are better than fourier series for representing a non smoothness non smooth function for representing a or non smooth i should not say piece wise smooth functions which is having some localized uh, information in some part of the domain okay and with the help of if you remember when i was pointing out uh, one of the drawback of the fourier series what was the drawback if you remember we were it was a gibbs phenomena that fourier series approximations does not uh, gives you a good approximations near the discontinuity so if you remember that part uh, i have shown you by taking the example of a this kind of a function of course x and then x minus 1 of course this is just a diagram of a that function and then when we, uh, we looked at the fourier approximations it will look like that so means because of this discontinuity which is, which is let's say x is equal to 0.5 this is a diagram that's why i have drawn a line but otherwise it is not a continuous at this point these oscillations were spreaded throughout the domain that was the gibbs phenomena idea but in a wavelet series you don't see that these oscillations are throughout the domain you see oscillations only in this part in fact those oscillations can also be removed with some help okay what is that some help because just now we have looked at the projection idea so if we are approximating a wavelet series we are approximating the function on vj space so the idea behind if i define this error ejx i can define this error this in the following way okay so here one of the estimate ejx will be order of 2 to the power minus j this estimate i am writing without proof if any one of you are interested in looking at the proof it is given in the reference book uh, which i am using for this course wavelet theory and its application a first course by myself itself so this is the estimate and to prove this estimate we also need uh, the key estimate for wavelet coefficient which i have proved just now okay so means if you want to reduce the error you can play with two parameters m and j m is the vanishing moment and j is the level of approximation on which i am approximating the function okay if you are increasing j error is decreasing if you are increasing m error is decreasing so whatever little oscillations you see near the discontinuity or in the near the non smoothness of the function you can in fact you can remove those little oscillations with the help of by increasing j or increasing m increasing m is you are using higher order wavelet increasing j is you are approximating a function at higher level 
space v j. So, it means whatever disadvantage we have seen in case of a four year series, we can overcome with that ad this advantage with the help of wavelet series. So, that was the idea behind this that how I should be able to deliver you that what is the advantage of wavelet series over Fourier series. So, now with these words I am uh, closing this lecture and so uh, in the next lecture which will be my last lecture, I will be showing you the advantage of uh, wavelet transform over Fourier transform. Okay. Thank you very much.